I can think of one guy who might like to play this guitar. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. The Gibson Les Paul Studio, you normally think of it as a pretty bare-bones Les Paul guitar, first introduced in 1983. It went through a few different spec changes, from being made of alder bodies, eventually getting to mahogany, sticking with the dot inlays, but then in the 90s, the beautiful ebony fretboard era, and then they switched them to rosewood, and then since then, they've stayed pretty constant. However, it's the early 2000s when they start to toy with it and do some other fun things. And that's not to say that there's not a limited edition model, such as the House of Guitars Anniversary that we had documented in this episode. But in my opinion, the series we're documenting today is one of the more iconic times they messed with the studio. And I'm going to argue it's the special limited edition case that made these things so memorable for this series that is called the Les Paul Platinum. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. It's right in your face. Silver Surfer, Silver Man Guy vibes. Let's take a look at this thing. So the first spec that's really going to stand out to you is it's just platinum all over. That's the finish. You've got a matching headstock to this. Your hardware has a platinum coating to it. So does your pick guard. You've got platinum colored knobs. You've even got platinum toppers over your regular pickup rings. But then you flip it over to the back. Even your back plates are the same silver color as is your neck and your tuners have the special plating. But if that's not enough, take a look at your fretboard. There are no inlays on this thing at all, except for our side markers. And it's an ebony board. So it's the return of the ebony boarded studios with a couple extra special gimmicks. Kind of cool. But the next thing to realize here is it is a satin finish. So that's either a pro or a con, depending on who you ask. However, it was not just done as a Les Paul. We also had a matching SG. Let's take a look at this thing real quick. This one's more so a teaser. I think I'll save the review and demo of this one. But you'll notice that this one has special pickups in it that are uncovered and have the matching gray too. But everything else is very similar to our studio that we're documenting today including our ebony fretboard, but this is based on the SG Special that they were offering at that time. Basically, it was the studio version. No, it's not SG Special like you're thinking in the 60s with the B90s and Raptail. That didn't really come back until the original collection. In this era, an SG Special just meant dot inlays, no mother of pearl logo, and you still had humbuckers, and it was a 68 kind of style. And if I understand the lore correctly, these are the two models the Platinum series launched with. The Platinum series existed from the year 2003 until 2005. However, since this was a limited edition, they decided to follow it up with a slightly more standard production run that changed a few things. So first off, the finish. They no longer offered them in satin. They offered gloss sunset orange, gloss ebony, and a really sweet gloss sapphire finish. Besides our new glossy colors, they ditched our cool cases, and you no longer get the matching headstock. Now, I guess you could make the argument that the gloss ebony has a matching black headstock, but that was accidental, not intentional. Otherwise, they were pretty similar. From what I've read, the gloss finishes were Guitar Center exclusives, or maybe a different dealer had the other ones, but the base model that other dealers got were the Silver Platinum ones, which is where the name Platinum Series comes from. And the reason why we didn't get the cool matching headstock in case is, you know, to make up for the gloss finish. But come on, guys, it's called the Les Paul Platinum. You will want the Platinum one in your collection. <laughs> At least that's how I think about it. First impressions, I'm actually really digging this. It's kind of chunkier than I was expecting, but this is the first time I've actually had one of these in my hands. Like I've had parts off of them before, but this really does not feel like a studio simply because of all the other gimmicks it's got going for it. It feels more like a dressed down standard. But at the same time, it kind of gives me Buckethead vibes because his guitar, it's all white matching headstock. You know, if you look at this at the wrong angle, it kind of looks white if you change some of the other plastics around. I actually found a photo. Somebody did put a kill switch in one of these trying to pull off the same vibes. As far as studios go, a lot of times you can find these for decent prices if you don't mind one that has some wear and tear. Typically, collectors want the really, really clean ones. Otherwise, no, I would not consider this a collectible model. It's also pretty common for people to steal the limited edition case when they sell their guitar. Now, being a satin finish, it's hard to find these in ridiculously clean shape. That's the reason why I bought this set, because the Les Paul is particularly nice 
works. But we still have to go through it with a fine tooth comb because it's spots like these. It's very easy to wear through this finish. So it's one of those ones that's a unique piece of history. But if it's not 100% clean mint condition, you don't have to worry about it. Just trash these things. They're a lot of fun. Or so I've heard and we'll find out today. So at the end of the day, these are studio grade guitars. They're not the highest end, but they are kind of cool if you appreciate the platinum gimmick. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside our platinum friend, let's take a deep dive look. Starting with our pickup, you can see it's got that brushed nickel look platinum plating to it. But as I was telling you earlier, that's just a metal plate that sits on top of a regular pickup ring. I'm not exactly sure when Gibson first started toying around with this idea, but I'm pretty sure this is one of the earlier models I've seen. Here you can see the continuation of your brushed cover. But then in the back, you can see more of your regular nickel look, but it just says Gibson USA. And the bridge pickup offers the exact same appointments. This is a matched 490R, 490T set. Or at least that's what spec sheets say online. That is definitely a 498T. Because a 490T would have been similar to our neck here at 7.77-ish. In the middle for fun, 4.95. So it looks like internet spec sheets might be incorrect because it looks like the SG does have the 490T and the 490R. So that is a different pickup set. So it's a good thing we checked that out. Our neck pickup cavity, it's nothing too fancy. It just has our silver paint and same thing in our bridge pickup cavity. If you look really closely right there, you can still see where the maple top joins onto the mahogany body, but it's tough to see. So your bridge is pretty typical. It just has your platinum plating, as they called it. It's one of the few times you can get a good look at the PW branding. The tailpiece is kind of funny to me. So it's platinum on the outside, but on the underside, it's just regular chrome. <laughs> That's funny. You have your platinum poker chip as well as a metal switch tip. However, I don't believe this is metal. It's most likely going to be a material very similar to our pick guard. So it looks like metal on the outside, right? But then you flip it over to the backside and you can just see it's some sort of a really reflective plastic material. They just give it that whole brushed aluminum look on the outside. It's pretty cool. So I would assume that's exactly what that is too. Even our similar looking truss rod cover is made of the same material on the back. But now we'll continue around the rest of the body. Again, this is a satin finish. I think it kind of works for the color and vibes that they're trying to go off of on this one. And it's just your regular two volumes and two tones with special knobs. Kind of like your gold reissue ones, except for this time they're silver. And here's a look at underneath the pickguard area. This is just a nice clean example. Moving on from our mahogany body and maple top, you got a mahogany neck with the straight up ebony fretboard. And look at these frets now, they are just shining. When I first got it, they had a lot of oxidation. But unfortunately, something happened to this guitar. See right here how it looks like there's a little bit of fret wear on your second fret. And if you look at all of your other frets, you can see a few small divots. That's not actually fret wear. Oftentimes during the shipping process, when the case gets shut on the neck, the strings are held against the fret. And if it ever gets jostled in shipping or gets a big bump, sometimes the string will cut the fret wire. It's not very common, but it does happen. And I would have never even noticed that I had not taken the time to polish these frets. So that's a bit of a bummer, but thankfully, level recrown. That'll take care of it. They're really shallow. What you gotta be worried about is when they're really deep. Remember, you can only take so much material off of all of the frets before you have to refret it. Now, thankfully, these ones are so small. I mean, unless you know it's there, you honestly don't even feel it. I don't feel them at all at that second fret. So if you wanna avoid that happening, take a piece of paper, fold it in half so it's two ply, and stick it in between your frets and strings. That can help prevent that from happening. It's still 24 three quarter inch scale length with a 12 inch fretboard radius. But check that out, a black nut that measures 1.69 inches, which increases to 2.08 by the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.86 and 0.97 by the 12th. Here's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. So more so a rounded neck profile. Not historic baseball bat big, but definitely has a nice roundedness. Now moving on to our headstock, I thought this was perfect. Then I was looking at that SG and I was like, ah, eh, that one's got some finish checking. If you get this in the light just right, this one has the checking too, which is kind of cool because I don't normally associate finish checking with satin finishes, but get it in the right angle, you can definitely see it all over it. So the headstocks are very prone to this checking. I like the Les Paul model being done up in black as well as your Gibson logo. It's one of those few times where I don't care if it's not Mother of Pearl. If you look, you actually have a small black layer right here. So how I imagine they did that is they put a black veneer over top of it like normal and then scraped away the silver paint. So it's 
kind of like binding, but I don't think it's actually true binding. But I think that's why this model looks so good. And very non-studio-like, despite not having binding anywhere else. Moving on to the back. I found a ding on it. I didn't see that before now. That's a shame. And there's another, like, light impression right here. Oh well, it's still a pretty clean one. All the wiring in here looks stock to me. You got your Gibson branded pots, ceramic disc capacitors, and here's a quick look at the toggle switch. And our plates. Same as what we saw before. Your output jack plate is also the same material as the pickguard. I do not believe these strap buttons are any different than normal though. Moving on from here, we've got our neck. I'm not going to say this one was never played because you can tell it's slightly buffed into a gloss. Not quite as flat feeling as the back of the headstock that doesn't get as much traction. But that's pretty common on any of these that had any type of playing time. Looks like I see a small finish check right there, but otherwise the back was in pretty good shape as far as that goes. I love these tuners. The platinum effect to it gives them a nice, almost satin-like feel. It's nice. But this is a 2005 edition from the 193rd day of the year. Initial batch, production number 629. Now keep in mind, that is not what number out of all these they made. That's just that particular day, this was number 629 stamped. But overall, this one's a little bit chunky. 9 pounds, 7.2 ounces, and all that weight is in the body. So let's go ahead and plug it in and hear how the platinum beauty sounds. you guys but i think this thing sounds pretty good the all silverness inspired me to want to play with a quarter today and during recording i kept thinking of daft punk and this definitely gives their vibes just imagine me having one of their helmets on here playing this <laughs> with a regular pick. <laughs>
Now that we know all about the Les Paul Studio Platinum, what are my final thoughts on this? Absolutely in love. It is a great guitar. I mean, once I kind of tied it into Daft Punk, that's when I started to really enjoy this thing because it's just the vibes it gives me. If they were to have a signature Les Paul, I'm sure it would have looked something similar to this. And having the frets being this ridiculously shiny just works with everything. So if you can find one of these for sale, go ahead and try it because I enjoyed the stock pickups, but a lot of people take these and modify them further. But an unbound ebony fretboard is a total win in my book. This one's part of my personal collection now. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed your new information on the Les Paul Studio Platinum, and we'll review the SG Platinum in a couple of months when you've forgotten about this video so I can give you a refresher again. All right, take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.